Hi hey everyone, my name is Rhea and today I have with me Claire. And Claire is a former EGOI gold medalist. She's also made Yusuko Camp and she's now a sophomore at MIT. So hi Claire, thanks for hi. being here. Theo, yeah, thanks for having me. For sure. So why don't we start with like, when did you get started of Yusuko? When did you hear about Yusuko? When did you take your first contest? I first heard about it in ninth grade, I think, since my brother took a few contests. He, he's two years older and um, ninth grade, I, yeah, I didn't take it seriously. Only in tenth grade, like when COVID started, is when I wanted, like, started preparing them for them seriously. I guess. Okay. How did your brother do in Yusuko? Out of curiosity. Um, I think in his junior year, he made Yusuko gold and then stopped taking contests. Okay. So you heard about it, but then you like started it seriously in tenth grade. Yes. Cool. And then, how did you do in tenth grade? Um. Oh yeah, 10th year I remember I was struggling in silver and yeah, I never made it past silver that year, which is what motivated me to like start like actually caring. Okay, so you went from bronze to silver in 10th grade? Yes. When did you make gold? Um, so the next contest, the junior year first, like the summer. Okay, so you were motivated the summer, study that summer. Right, or I guess starting before, like spring too. Oh, and that's when COVID hit? Yeah. Like okay. That, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I was in college when COVID hit, so. Oh. Yeah. Was not doing Yusuko then. All right, cool. So your COVID hit. You're stuck at home. You study for Yusuko. Make gold. When did you make platinum? Um, I remember I was open on junior year. Okay, so you like three months later in platinum. Yeah. Cool. And then, I believe your junior year you competed in EGOI for the first yeah. time. Yeah. Awesome. And how did you prepare for EGOI? Oh, uh, I think the entire year I was. Prepare, or I wanted to have gold, so it wasn't like two separate preparations. It was like one continuous like, um, yeah, I was like doing code forces and also passing school problems, and it was all just like getting better. Like I wasn't preparing for anything in particular, I guess. Okay, you're just getting better and getting better, and you're like, oh, I'm with EGOI. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. And um, how did you like when you took the first EGOI contest? It was online, right? Because it was COVID that year. Yeah. I guess what were your expectations going into EGOI? You probably, like, it was a new contest, it was your first year it existed. Yeah, it was also, like, my, just, I had only done competitive programming seriously for, like, a little over a year, so I also did not have, like, high expectations. Oh, I guess you, at that time, I also didn't know, like, Olympiad, like, scoring or anything else, so I didn't have, like, specific expectations, I guess I just wanted to get a medal, and also since it was the first year of the contest, I didn't know other, like, the competition field, like who else was going. So to be honest, like I didn't really have expectations. Okay, that's pretty nice. Like it's also really amazing that you've been seriously preparing for a year and you got like a gold medal in EGI. That's cool. So when you were preparing for say like gold and above, how did you, like I know you said you just found past problems and working on code forces problems, but like how did you make sure you were consistently improving? That's a pretty fast rate of improvement. Yeah, I took contests. Um, like I, I probably average like two or three a week. It's so mostly on weekends, and yeah, I was really like didn't with like taking live contests. Oh, okay. So you were like seeing your progress. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, like, would it frustrate you when you take a practice contest and you didn't do as well as you wanted to? Um. Yeah. I think it's even like more so for like live contests. I often like did not, or like did poorly, and I yeah did mo demotivate me. But did it demotivate you, or did it motivate you? I guess. It made me temporarily sad, but I guess like in the back of my head, I knew that I could get better. Okay, yeah. I also feel like the same way. Whenever I do bad on something, I feel like yeah. motivated to just go for it and do yeah. more. So that's pretty smart. Like if you know it's going to motivate you, you just take more practice contests and you're push or live contests and you're pushing yourself to do great. Yeah. So you would do like basically all the code forces contests. Yeah. Also, oh. most like all the act coders. Like, you did act code too. Yeah. Okay. What about top coder? Um no. Um, I did some. I also did like a lot of code chef contests. I was like currently, it's, I don't think it's like as active now. So we have like these code forces contests, at coder, code chef. Yeah, those are amazing. I guess. Just doing all the contests, yeah. and you were just motivating yourself. All right, that's actually a pretty good coding like strategy. So you get they get a lot of problems in it, and then what would you do after the contest? Would you upsell? Would you do practice problems? Yeah, it's been a long time upselling. To be honest. Like, usually after a contest, I get, like, my productivity kind of crashes. But yeah, I tried to upsell everything I couldn't get in contests. And I, I think during the week when I can't take live contests, like, between, like, class or, like, evening, like, during school-ish times, I just, like, think about problems in my head. 
Oh, yes. Just in school, you're like looking at a problem. You're just like, what are you doing? Stop being like, stop goofing off. And you're like, but I'm doing coding. Yeah, that's like COVID year. So my teachers did not, did not oh, care. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, I remember during COVID year, our classes were online. And so I could just be like, I think at one point I was in two participation mandatory classes at the same time. And I just had like two Zoom windows open at the same time. Yeah. It, was, it was great. Um, okay, so you're taking all these contests. You said you upsolved all the problems you missed? Or definitely like, if I was like at the end of the contest, I was just like almost done with the problem. Like definitely those contests, had, those problems that they like, upsolve. Probably like I tried to do like one or two like of the next problems. Okay, after. that makes sense. I was gonna say like code forces div two problems. They get pretty difficult. Um, um yeah, some of the harder ones. Oh, yeah. okay. So you're like solving problems. You're upsolving. Um, do you f- notice yourself like getting better? Do you notice yourself solving more problems in the live contests? Oh, I think definitely like. The growth rate decreased, like, I guess plateaued, probably, like, like, halfway through junior year, or maybe a little after. And, yeah, I guess, yeah, I'm still, like, actively trying to, like, find ways to be more efficient, like, in my practicing, since, yeah, it definitely did slow down. Okay. What did you do when it slowed down? Um, honestly, I was, like, I felt very lost, or, like, I didn't, like, know what to do, and I guess, I guess I tried some stuff, like... Actually, to be honest, then, I didn't, I was just, like, kind of close-minded. I was practicing in the same way that I used to, so, like, I guess that's why I didn't end up, like, increasing my growth rate after that. Okay, but in hindsight, like, in hindsight being 2020, what would you have done if you can go back in time? And- yeah, I'll definitely have a more, an emphasis on, like, practicing efficiently. A lot of times I've just, like, spent hours, like, being very, like, low-efficient practicing. Just, like, I'd often, like, wander and, like, like think about things that were definitely not the correct way. So I think um, maybe setting a timer. Also, like, I've heard um, tips like you should always be writing something, and if you're not, you're probably not, like, actively thinking. So it's just, like, trying to be, like, maximize efficiency. Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, especially because, yeah. like, you're probably super busy in high school, and so just taking that, like, time that you have for Yusuko and spending it efficiently. Yeah, honestly, I think I blocked up a lot of time for Yusuko, so I think that was, that, in hindsight, that's really a bad thing. I blocked up, like, too much time, so I didn't value efficiency. Oh, I see. Was that your dream college, or...? Um, I never really thought actively about schools. Really? Yeah. Okay, so you just were like, I'm going to apply to them? Yeah, I think I might have felt like the natural choice after junior year. Just like seeing where my the people I looked up to went to. I guess I wanna, wanted to go there, too. That makes sense. I think like Yusuko people go to MIT partially because other Yusuko people go, yeah. and partially because MIT accepts Yusuko people. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, so, okay. So let's go back to, like bronze to silver so like i'll say there's a competitor walks up to you but like hey claire i barely know how to code how do i go from bronze to silver what would you tell them like what would what would what did you do what would you change like what should they do um i think if someone's asking that question what they're lacking is probably um like mathematical problem solving skills i I guess there's two possibilities one is like the actual coding yeah that's why i did bronze and java and that was from like in like I was taking like an introductory like Java class in school and I think coding wise it's not usually that's not the biggest burden but yeah with problem solving I think um doing math problems or obviously like obviously competitive programming problems are like better but like any type of like problem solving skills like doing those problems would help okay so just doing problems essentially. yeah yeah that's, that's fair so like let's say someone is is doing problems though in bronze and they're just unable to solve the harder ones um yeah this is like something I've like just recently even like le- learning but I think um especially during earlier stages it just read the solution read the editorial and a lot of that is like foundational stuff that you shouldn't expect yourself to come up with like a lot of it is hard for beginners because it's just a hard concept and more advanced people only know it because they've done it so many times so just like read the solution I guess okay. yeah, I kind of agree like I will I, hmm, I feel like part of it is like some stuff like you read the solution and then you've like seen it before the next time but I think part of it's also like coming up with stuff in contests that you haven't seen before can be um, helpful. Like, there might be some observation that you've never made on a previous problem that just applies to the problem. Yeah, I agree. But I guess the general problem-solving strategies often, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. The problem-solving, like, strategies, I agree, like, the same. But, like, the 
observations yeah. that they lead you to may be different. Yeah. That's also like one problem I have with editorials. Like they usually always give you like the observations, but they don't always walk you through the problem solving strategies, which is kind of annoying in my opinion. Yeah, I think um, with that, talking to other or like having a community so like you can talk to other people about the contest, often it's really like valuable to hear like how they solved it because they they're definitely some more similar to you than like the editorialists and seeing their path was yeah. helpful. And it's probably like you also if you have the community too, though you'll be constantly motivated by them too. And yeah. constantly push to be better for them. Yeah, I guess that's something I learned like af- like only in like towards the end of senior year and I wish yeah. I think yeah, community is important. I wish I kinda had more of that. Yeah. So I guess like where did you where where did you go to high school at? Oh Montgomery Blair in Maryland. Okay. So you probably had other Yusuko people there. Oh um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because yeah, the Great Obama had a lot of really strong competitors. I I think throughout my entire high school, I was never like super close with them, and or that's what since after I started, it was mostly online too. So there's never really like oh, connections. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. So there wasn't like a club at school where said you used to go. Oh yeah, there's definitely a, there was a computer club, and we did yeah yeah to yeah to be fair like there was a lot of like resources and we had lectures and I could learn a lot and also they there was like a Discord and we talked about problems sometimes. Okay, yeah. so like at least you had a little bit of community there, even if it was during COVID and stuff. Um, yeah, I guess it was partially like on me, like I didn't actively like integrate myself into these communities. I guess I wasn't like super social, but yeah, there definitely was resources and it helped me. Okay, that's cool. Um, all right, so now let's say that the person, you know, been asking you about you to go, they finally make silver. Nice. And they're like, okay, Claire, I got a thousand in bronze, but I can't solve any silver problems. What do I do now? Yeah, honestly, that was, I still think silver, like going past silver is like the hardest, like delta to make. And, um... Yeah, I think for me this is where like you can't, or like I think a lot of people relied on their past like either like minimal like contest math experience or like coding to pass rounds, and silver is where like you actually have to like dedicate time for competitive programming, I guess or um, competitive math some problem solving, and this just like requires like um, yeah, it's just like a lot of time and effort to solving problems in your free time. Yeah, I think silver is also the first time that you actually have to learn algorithms and. Oh, sorry, Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and then the problems obviously get more difficult. Yeah. yeah. All right, so gold is probably similar to silver. Yeah, I would say that's just like silver, but like spend more time on it. Ah, similar, but spend more time on yeah. it. Yeah. Obviously, like some new algorithms, but like mostly just yeah. like more time. Well, the person makes platinum, and what if they say, Claire, I want to make EGOI, or I'm, in, I'm on the EGOI team, how do I prepare for EGOI? Or I'm in platinum, and I want to get a good score on EGOI, I want to make the team, how do, what do I recommend there? Um, yeah, so looking at this, I guess it's only been like two years of EGOI, but like looking at the trend, it seems like there's a lot of ad hoc problems. I guess specifically the, last, or the most recent contest, there's um, a lot of like constructive or interactives. And I guess for that, obviously like if you want to do all EGOI specifically, you should do like problems similar to that. And I think at Coder and also like Code Versus currently has a lot of like that style problems. And also it's very like tangential to math, I feel like, at least the most recent contest. So I think for like concrete advice, like don't spend that much time on like al- like hard algorithms or data structures. Like those really, I don't think like no hard data structures has ever appeared. So just like, yeah, I guess just like doing problems in the meantime. Um, definitely the like, off-solving EGI and also like OI contest. But yeah, I think focusing on like that coding is good. Okay. Cool, so they go to EGOI and they get the middle like, thank you, Claire. No, um, that'd be cool if that did happen. Um, all right, so you talk a little bit about math. Like, what is your math background? Oh, yeah, so I think I, I did not do contests until, like, ninth grade. And to be honest, like, it was, like, yeah, it was something, like, I kind of wish I started earlier, but, like, whatever. Um, so, yeah, ninth grade, I, a few of my school were, like, did a lot of math contests. So I tried to, like, learn from them, so I did... I went to a lot of like math competitions in ninth and tenth grade, but after like I shifted to competitive programming and after COVID, I just, like didn't do as much math. So I guess I would never, I was never like super into it, but like I took the AMCs and like took Amy and yeah. Okay, what was your Amy score out of curiosity? Um, I think seven was my. Okay, that's pretty good. Cool. Yeah, I didn't have any math background. Uh, never made yeah. Amy, but yeah. Cool, so you don't need that much math for Yusuko. Oh yeah, actually to, to clarify, like when I, I guess like when I passed bronze, I didn't make Amy. And also when I, yeah, I think also like I got to gold without Amy. Yeah, yeah I definitely did not have much. 
Cool, yeah. I think there are like occasional math concepts that do show up, but none right. of them are really complicated. Right, right. Like a lot of them can be derived if you have a solid foundation of math, which most used to go people right. uh, do have from what I've noticed. All right, cool. So you make EJY team the first year. The first year time you go to Yusuko camp in your junior year was virtual. Right. And the second time you went in person right. when you were like a finalist. So how are those two experiences? Um, like comparing them or just talking about them? Either way. I think they're both very eye-opening. I like le learned like so much from each of them. So I think the first time I was just like, I think I was very grateful to be with a lot of people who were, like, I guess these are like the set of people I looked up to and just, um, it, def it increased my motivation. Like that, I guess that was the main change. And knowing that like they also like acted and like talked and thought similar to me, it's just giving me like motivation that like, yeah, if I worked harder, I could also like both like talk to them and also like, uh, like attain like their skills and stuff. You can talk to them without working harder. Yeah, I guess like connect like on a deeper level than just oh, like, I see. Talk. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's probably like also like if you see a, someone do it, you're more likely to believe that you can do it too. It sort of like humanizes them. Yeah. Because if you look up to human. someone like an idol, you're like, well, I can never be as good as Taylor Swift. And that is definitely true. But in terms of coding, like you can definitely. Reason. Yeah, I guess like more specifically, like before that, I just knew them by, I guess, their like code versus username, where like sometimes on Discord they would talk and they always felt like very like. Oh, there's like levels of warming. I, like, I was really kind of like scared in a way also. Yeah, getting over that was nice. Okay. How was in-person uh, Yusuke camp for the first time? Yeah, that was, I guess that was a shift from like motivation. This was like more fun, I guess. Also, since it was like end of senior year, I guess. But yeah, it's definitely, this, I think this was like, this is like the first time I thought competitive was like fun, fun. I guess before I had like personal enjoyment, but like, doing contests and like problems with other people was like a different type of enjoyment and that's honestly like what's like made me like like I've kept staying CP since then just because of the like community part. That's awesome. That is all the questions I had for you. Is there any advice you have to anyone struggling with Yusuko or working on Yusuko? Um yeah I guess like uh, well just in general like for me, starting was the hardest part, and I, I guess it's just like consolation that like things, it's very, it's a lot easier to like practice when you like overcome the initial barrier. So just like stick with it, and also second, like I guess more concretely, um, I guess advice I would have I would have appreciated when I was like still in high school was just like reading solutions more quickly. I think this I used to be like really stubborn, so like just like yeah, letting go of your ego and just like admitting that you don't know how to solve something within like 30 minutes and moving on is very helpful. All right, you heard it here. Just start, stick with it, and read the solution in 30 minutes if you can't or, get it. Uh, All right, thanks, Claire. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, that's nice.